All right. Um, please forgive me for making you rise again. Would you stand just for one more second for Psalms 43? Come on, let's read it together um, out loud. And it reads, He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto God. You may be seated in his presence. We have been uh, on a series entitled, Thank God. And as I was preparing, uh, the Lord shifted me and put me right in the midst of this particular passage in Psalms 40 and 3, where David was having uh, a really a moment of, once again, uh, singing unto the Lord, uh, a Shabbat, if you would, uh, unto the Lord. And it called me to uh, the point that God did not create us to experience worship, but he created us to initiate worship. Matter of fact, if we understand even the content of how we come into play, you know, the enemy, Satan, was, uh, was the chief musician uh, kicked out for his disobedience and wanting to overthrow the kingdom of God. And uh, his position was to play music. His, his position was musical, and he, he could play all sorts of notes and sounds. And so in, uh, in proxy of that, God has designed man, and our, 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 our chief design, one of our chief designs is to give God glory and worship and we are now, uh, and that's why he can't stand your guts. He hates you because you stand in position and give worship the way God ultimately intended him to do. Okay, all right. And so he's calling us to initiate worship, and, and he's called you to give him glory and honor and praise. And so your worship must have a direction that dictates dimension. It has to go beyond just surface. And I believe there's two particular dimensions of that, is that we have to learn how to vertical and uh, horizontally uh, enter into the presence of God. And so the vertical dimension is ultimately your ability to thank God through designed expression of worship. Now, last week we talked about the various kinds of worship. We talked about Tahila, we talked about uh, Toda, Yoda, you remember, um, and all the different types of praise. And so there's an expression of worship that we're told to, to give, and it has something attached to it. It's interesting because uh, if you grasp vertical worship, you'll develop a method that gets God involved with your battle. Okay. All right. All right. Let's prove this because uh, that's ultimately what David did in Psalms. He constantly, while going through situations, would go to battle with a song. And so even the context of Psalms 40, he said he's putting a new song. He's about to do something new. He's about to give me a, a, a new playbook. And in 2 Chronicles 20, a great example of, of this uh, instrument of vertical worship, it says in 2 Chronicles 20, Jehoshaphat, let me set this up, was the king of Judah. And the enemies, which were plural, enemies, plural, uh, had come to destroy him. It's important that you understand there were enemies on every side of the Moabites. And as several elements wanted to destroy him. And I, 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 I kind of liken this sometimes to my own personal situation for those of us that may have enemy-like situations where on multiple sides uh, you got health this way, finances this way, and there are things coming on multiple angles, and there seem to be enemies at every side. And it, like Jehoshaphat, the Bible says in, uh, in, in 20, it says he prayed, but the enemies remained there. And, I, I, and let, let me just say something. Uh, it's imperative that you have, have an active prayer life. Amen? A few people. And so, but the prayers, uh, the, the prayer didn't shift nothing. Jehoshaphat began to fast, but the Bible says that the enemy remained strong and present. So he prayed and he fasted. And now we know some things only come by. And so there's a principle, he says, amen for your prayers, amen for your fasting. The enemy still remains strong and present even when he prayed. And so verse 20, 21 puts us at the footsteps where the man of God had spoken and prophesied to King Jehoshaphat and said to him, uh, you know what, you're not going to have to fight this battle. 
But what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get a worship going. And verse 20 says, he, after consulting with the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. And this is what they sang. Come on. Give thanks to the Lord, his faithful love. This is before anything ever happened. Oh, y'all missed it. This is, uh, 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 they had not even engaged in the battle. They had not yet won the victory. They still had enemies from Moab and Amnon and, and Syria. They all were still present, but they began to lift up, give thanks unto the Lord. Some of us, let me just declare this. No, I, I want to say all of us, but I'll just speak for myself. I'm realizing that there are times when I'm in the midst of a struggle or a stronghold moment, that God is not just declaring me to pray, that God is not just declaring me to fast. Sometimes, sometimes he's looking for my worship. I realize that we have distorted worship. It is worship on Sunday or in one moment, but never again. So we have some, some of us have active prayer lives, but no worship life. We're not, there's no worship, and so it's foreign when it's time to go into the presence of God through worship because we are not there on the regular. But you're designed to initiate worship to get God involved in your battles. You've seen this operating. Uh, uh, some of you, a few of you have been in a problematic moment, and you put the right worship song on. Where, where are my people that do that? Oh, a few of y'all. And, 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 and Hell feels like it's breaking loose. And, 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 and you put on the Todd Dele I mean, whatever your music is, you put on that worship song that all, all of a sudden the problem did not dissipate, but your worship got something else stirring on the inside and has initiated a clarion call that although it feels like you're pressed on every side, and although it feels like you're going to be destroyed, God steps in with a worship that reminds you that I'm not left, left you nor forsaken you. The Bible says in verse 22, and when they began to sing to praise the Lord, the Lord set an ambush against the children of Am. The Lord set an am the Lord set the ambush. The Lord set the ambush. But there was a worship that released the, war, the Lord to set the ambush. I, 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 I think we have been, and, and, and please, I, I may just be dealing with me. Let me deal with me and not mess with y'all. There are times when I don't realize how imperative my worship is to God setting ambushes. There's times where I don't realize I'm struggling in my prayer time. I'm praying, but it's not effective. Where are you at? I'm just, I, I, I'm praying, but, and I'm fasting, and I'm doing all the seemingly things that's supposed to be done, but I have no worship. Matter of fact, the first thing the devil takes from you when he's trying to get you off course is your worship. You can't lift your hands. You can't worship. You can't sing nothing. Matter of fact, you so down, you just can't move. And your lack of movement initiates another attack in and itself. Because the enemy says, I got them right where I need them. They can't lift their hands. They can't move. And they've surrendered to their own condition. And God says, watch this. Watch this. Here's the thing. The thing that you're waiting for God to do, God is waiting on you to initiate through your worship. We were, you're waiting for some God saying, I can't move. The way I operate is worship gets my attention. So watch this. All through the Bible where you see God moving, there was always a prayer, but worship followed the prayer. Let me say this. Your anticipation should never override your initiation of giving God glory. We anticipate too much. God, I done pray, and we get jacked up when he does not do anything, but you didn't initiate nothing. 
you only anticipate it without initiating. And there's a broken process in place because we want God to move, but then we don't want to move to move God. David, watch this. Let's go back to our text. David had experienced some stuff with the Lord. God had rescued him and refreshed him several times. And David had experienced the presence of, a, of, of the Lord and it changed him. Can I talk to a few of you that, that you experienced God and he changed you? And, and, and he could no longer be silent about it. And so the praise was he always wrote songs, but this moment he put a new song on his mind. The new song was an indicator that, God, I'm expecting something fresher. No, 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 I, I got those songs, but there's something different. Every time he wrote a song, David would write a song, and the psalm, with all the psalms, are meant to be sung. Y'all know this, right? They're songs. I'm shocked that no one has put a full gospel album out with just psalms. I just roll it out to all the people. No, I'm just rolling it out. No one has put a, a hidden gospel CD out with just Psalms. I know I know there's some out there that are they're really boring, but I'm saying, no, 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 I've heard, I, I, I'm sorry, that's not, that was wrong. No, no, take that back. Hold on. There are some people who did try it, but it just didn't have the, Mm, the flair, thank you. But, but there's Psalms. And so if you're wondering what David was doing, he was always in the middle of a mess singing. Imagine yourself in the thick of the mess and you break out in a psalm. Praise unto the Lord, for he is great. And his mercy endureth forever. And you just start breaking out in psalm. And now other people are like, you crazy. But you know that your faith is initiated with your worship. You know that you were designed to worship. And so in spite of what, see, see, some of us are stuck in a place where we want more, but your next level is hindered by your own inconsistency to give God glory. So you're giving God uh, well, I give God glory all the time, but you're silent. He can barely hear your worship. See, there's a, there's a relief in worship, and David knew it. He knew it because he knew what praise did. And so when you read through it, you realize that, uh, watch this, you decide when God shows up. No, you get to decide when God shows up to your situation through your worship. And too many of us, uh, and, and let me just say this. I'm just going to speak about me. I have sometimes a block from giving God a worship moment where it's necessary. Just talk about me. Let me I'm just going to deal with me. And I'll be going through a situation, but I don't want to do nothing while in the situation. Just talking about me. I'm just talking about me. And so what happens is I know that I want God to do something, and I'll send up a prayer, but the prayer is half-hearted. Just talking about me. Just talking about me. And I'm praying, but then I, that's it. I stop, and there's no song following the praise. But apart, every time God moved, there was a prayer process, but there was a praise process. Okay, okay, watch this. Um, um, there is, and this is what's called, so this is the vertical, right? Now watch this, because the horizontal starts to affect other people. When my vertical worship is right, it affects me and God. And it sets me in order with him that now what I was going through, he gets involved with. But my horizontal now hits everyone around me. So watch this. Because the proclamation, watch this, of your worship will create a horizontal dimension that will witness to others. That means heartfelt worship will always create a witness. Let's prove it. Acts. Paul and Silas. They were beaten. Arrested. Shackled. And the Bible says, as they sat there in their condition, they prayed. 
but then they begin to sing Tehillah. They begin the Tehillah and Shabbat the Lord. And in the process, the prison cell shakes. And uh, the guard almost killed himself. But Paul says, hey, hold up. We're still here. We're not going nowhere. We have not been released naturally. Uh, we've been released spiritually. We went in the spirit and worship and we were free. And God just wanted to show a sign that not only were we free mentally, uh, spiritually, but a physical has happened also. So be, it's all right. Be, it's well with your soul. Don't worry. We ain't going nowhere. That worship released to the jailer. That jailer became the person who led the Philippian church. That's the person who started the Philippian church. That was the pastor, the jailer. Cut his, he said, I'm done. He said, I'm quitting. The God that they serve is a bad joker. I'm going to go serve that. Left his job and said, I'll, I'm, a, I'm, I'm becoming a pastor. Done. That's what comes out of our worship. Is it possible that our worship is not on the kill that it's supposed to be? And that's why we don't see the great witness. All right, let's go back to the text. David said, 43, he says, many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. That says many will know God's presence. How? Through your worship. He said, and people saw David. David, they seen David go through stuff. They seen when David was going to lose a child. They seen David go through stuff, and they watched David worship while in the moment. Someone's watching your worship and indicating whether or not they want to serve the God you serve. Your witness has been your great, your, your worship has been your greatest witness and you don't realize it. And so that's why, watch this. Oh, I don't want to say this. I'm going to say it anyway. No, I felt like I need to say it. That's why as believers, you can't spill all your mess to every non-believer. And you talking to people that don't understand what you're, the God you serve, and you're trying to, that's, you're calling them your friend, but y'all unequally yoked in friendship, and so they can't see how, because you, you complaining, 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 oh yes, but come to church. I'm going to go to your church. You're going to the same hell I'm going through, and you handle it worse than me. I don't see nothing different in your life. Uh-uh. No thanks. Mm-hmm. No, I'll keep hail mailing. I'll do whatever. Whatever you're doing is not working. Because I keep hearing you. You cannot. Because see, they're looking. At, that's a part of your worship. Your testimony. How you handle your circumstances. What the joy you have on the inside. Or what the joy you express on the outside. People are watching your worship. And they're going, mm-mm, that's a bad witness. Look, they're doing worse than me. I'm okay without your God. Well, I don't know who, I better. Mm. Your worship should be your consistent, your constant, excuse me, attitude and activity of your dedication to God. There is a, there, there, there's, a, there's an attitude, there's, a, there's an activity, there's a, a process. When you look in the word of God, you see characters that come alive that they were always in something, but they were also always dedicated to the something of God. When people far away hear the people of God, they should experience something that they've never seen before. They should be intrigued to worship the God you serve. Worship is without question the magnet that moves other people to worship. And when we get to the place, and Paul says it best in 1 Corinthians, Paul told the Corinthian church to worship in such a clear way that if an unbeliever entered the room, 
it says they would be convicted by everything that they experienced. They would be judged, and the secrets of their hearts would be revealed, and as a result, they would fall face down and worship God, proclaiming that God is really among you. Ask yourself, is your worship convicting? And I hate to be an example in this moment. Or is your worship so silent, non-moving, that people, people come in, they can sit next to you, and they don't feel nothing at all? You, know? you looking like it's paint drying, they looking like paint drying. Some of you, I cannot tell that there's a worship team in the room. I mean, worship team. <laughs> there is no God and the worship team and then uh, they remixed the one song with the Michael Jackson thing in it I thought, I thought my whole church was going to go I was like no no had people they were like yeah. And you go to yourself and you say, what happened? That was Michael Jackson beat in there. And nobody, the whole praise team broke out because they heard it. They was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I swore the whole church was going to give God praise that way. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I realized we're not all in the same place because there's no private worship. Private worship brings a public edification. Private worship automatically, you hear, because guess what? When that song come on that you like, do not tell me all y'all don't have a song. Everyone in here, music, it, that song come on. Mm. Face, everything, you start, oh, you remember that? I remember, this take me back. Where is it taking you? To worship? Where, where are you going? What, 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 what's going on? Where are you going? Is it taking you to Christ? Is it leading you to, closer to God? Is heaven opening up? No, I just remember the way my flesh feel when that song come on Mm. Oh, what happened? Yeah, because what happens is we have adopted so much of the world that that worship comes instinctive and we have to force ourselves into a place of worshiping God. Oh, I better stop. Mm. I got to stop. I, uh. so, so, so God, God is... Constantly having to pry us back into the things because we have been hooked, bamboozled, run amok. No, no, the enemy has enticed us so that we will jump for our favorite that and weigh it out with God. It's funny, I was sharing earlier how people, when they are invested in the world, they are invested. And uh, last week, um, a team beat another team. And uh, I'll leave the team's name is I don't want to offend nobody. And the team destroyed the other team. And you would think that the other team, people would not even put their jerseys on but I went to the gym and somebody was flaunting it like, like they had won and I was thinking why even wear that New Jersey I mean that team why wear it right now wear it wear it after you get a win
And I found out that if, even if your team is a losing team, matter of fact, I bumped into a guy who I don't even know too many Dolphin fans. I could say that because nobody here Dolphin fan. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Rod. <laughs> nobody else is going to respond. Thank you. So I bumped into the Dolphin fan. And I said, he always wear dolphin everything. Dolphin. His car is a dolphin color. His house, if you Google his house, it is dolphin blue. Wow. And I, and I, and I don't know what compels him to stay. He don't get any money from them. And matter of fact, some of us don't get any money. But our worship to our team. I told my mother, I said, Mom, that's a real fan. That's a real, because they wore that, t that jersey on a Monday after they got stomped in the ground. I'm wondering, could you still give God glory through your mess when you feel like you're losing and then give him worship? Because worship, when we honor God, when, we, when we're on his team, it's regardless of what I'm experiencing. And that's when God causes for a witness to go out where others say, I know what you're going through. And you're still giving God glory. And you say, because I know what he's capable of. That's when your win comes apparent. Let me close. Let me close. He says, uh, Jesus says, as for me, if I be lifted up. From the earth I'll draw all people to myself now now for, for let me make sure in the midst of I understand these words are his prediction of his death it still communicates volume to us in our worship when Jesus is lifted up in praise and worship lost people are attracted to him when we understand that when God's people start experiencing the presence of God, when you meet God and engage your heart and your lives are changed and consistently you're giving God glory, lost people are drawn into the presence of God. The unbeliever wants what the believer has. He just don't know it. They, they don't have peace. And the, the founder of the Salvation Army, he said it this way. He said, if... If a church, now let me just say this, because I'm going to change. Church meaning the people, not the building. Church is what? Ecclesia, called out ones, the, the church. If the church was on fire, if the people was on fire for God, people for miles would come to watch them burn. If believers experience the fire of God's worship, let me tell you something. People will come and watch you burn for miles around. There's something electrifying about a fire. If something's on fire, you're looking at it. You don't want to move. You feel bad about it. If it's someone's home, you're like, oh, my God, but you want to still watch it. If you ever had a fire in front of you, a campfire, you always want to put something in it to see how quick it'll get engulfed. And I can't be the only one. I'm not the only one, right? I love putting stuff in fire. I'm like, dude. I start my fireplace, and I just put everything in it. I, I do. I, I like, especially Christmas. Man, oh, we don't have to throw that in garbage. Come here. Give, give me that. Give me that. Give me that. <laughs> Did you see how fast that one burned? Oh, I love the colors. You put certain paper in there, you're like, ooh. That was a lot of chemicals. The reason being is people love it because fire is electrifying. When a believer has a worship that's on fire, 
People come from miles around just to put stuff. Hey, can I just touch the flames? Can I get warm next to your fire? That's why coworkers should be coming around wanting to get fire. Get, get, oh, can I just get warm? Because my day is a mess. I'm going through crazy stuff. But they come around the flame, and what they do, they get a little glimpse of the fire of your worship, and they feel it, and they get the experience of joy. They might be going through hell and high water, but then all of a sudden, there's a flicker that comes off on them, and now all of a sudden, that they get changed and turned around. I love walking around with that type of fire on me. I got to hang out with some pastors and I'll close. I got to hang out with some pastors uh, a few days back and uh, I came in and you know they were talking and um, and we, they're pastors now. Everybody's a pastor and we're sitting there and they was really heavy and gloomy a little light and I said um, I don't know what any of y'all are talking about. And, uh, and I started giving them the fire on the inside. Man, they was like this. They were, they were caught up. They, and one guy said, oh, I don't know if I know about the anointing. This pastor, y'all keep this between us. Please don't let this out. Oh, no, I'm just joking. No, no, keep, keep the camera. It's all right. It's all right. They won't see this. <laughs> Nobody will know who I'm talking about. So they was like this. I'm not sure if I know about if the anointing hit me or not. And I'm looking at them going, how you do what you do without the anointing. I, I could not do anything without the anointing. I need the anointing. It's the anointing that the... Sh <laughs> without the anointing. And so whenever I feel like I'm losing the anointing, I need to go and worship some more. I need to get more anointing. Because where the anointing is, God will cause me to function outside my flesh and beyond my capabilities and beyond what I think is possible. It's the anointing some of you don't realize, but your anointing is trapped in your worship. And so some people, oh wait, do you understand how oil gets produced? It gets crushed. Y'all ain't never seen it? Lucy? I'm talking my oldest saints. Younger saints, y'all don't even know what Lucy is. But Lucy, and she was walking around in the grapes, and she's stomping because oil is made, anointing is made in the crushing. You might be going through something and not realize how much anointing God's trying to put in your life. You don't realize that there's an anointing in your crushing. There's an anointing that God's trying to use and it's right in the midst of your worship that God gets to pour it out. He'll want to pour it out on a witness. He'll want to pour it out on someone. But he needs you to go through something to get it. If you would only know that what God's trying to do for you, he has to do through you. And it requires you to feel like you're broken in order for him to use it. I wish there was another way. I wish God could use me unbroken. But it's when I'm broken that the potter gets back to put water on the inside. And he starts to get to remold what I thought was unmoldable. God says, I'll mold it with your worship. And he starts molding me. And as he molds me, he says, once I get it done, I'll, ca I'll cause for you to get put in a fire. And the fire will bake you enough that now you can hold stuff. And if it gets broken again, I have the capability to call you back unto myself and reformulate you and pour more word back in you. And oh, get you all back up. And I'll re-put you back in fire. So you can hold more stuff. It's right when you're holding stuff that I'm able to pour you out as a drink offering on someone. You don't realize it, but what you're going through right now, can I talk to those who are experiencing something? What you're going through right now is just right for what God wants to do for someone else. I wish I could tell you what you're going through is for you, but it's not. What you're going through is so God can use you to save someone that is absolutely lost. What you're going through is because God's not finished with what he wants to do through you, and he says, I know I can use them. Like, well, why? 
Why I got to be sick? Why I got to be this? Why I got to be broke? Why I got to be this? Because it is in that broken place. He says, I'll cause you to discipline yourself enough to worship me. If I never brought you there, you would never worship me right. Some of you know, you just go on about, it is in your mess that God breaks you and says, now worship me. And you're like, I don't feel like it. Do you understand what I'm going through? He said, yes, that's where I put the worship. You were designed to worship in mess. You were. You, you, you don't break in mess. You would have lost your mind then. But he says, no, I, I've designed you that in when you feel like you're losing it, God says, to hold it together, come back to me. To hold it together, give me glory. To hold it together, worship me. Get, get in my word enough that I can saturate you. It's the word that's the water that makes the clay turn back into soft enough to mold. It's the word. The word. The reason why you still feel like you're broken, you need enough word to bring you back into clay-like formation. Then you'll get bit put back in the fire, and the fire hardens you not to life, but hardens you so you, life doesn't destroy you. Okay, I got to stop. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Okay, I got to stop. Watch this. Watch this. You have to thank God and get into a worship because you were designed for worship. He designed you in such a way that everything you've been experiencing is the setup for what he wants to pour out on somebody. What you're going through is not for you. Tell your, tell your neighbor, what you're going through is not for you. What you're going through is not for you. It's not for you. It's not for you. This is for someone else. Come on, stand on your feet with me. I need you to understand something. I thought... Sometimes I think everything I'm going through is just for me. Like, God, why? you teaching me. But he teaches you so you could be the teacher. He ain't take you through everything you've been through to play. He's teaching you so that you will one day be the teacher. You're a worshiper. And when you realize that, your worship can't be silent. You can't declare I'm worshiping God and I'm in silent. Those of who you're supposed to come, come while I'm talking. I, 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 I got to close. I'm way over my time. We're normally never here this long. Uh, well, some of us. <laughs> if God's calling you to come, come quickly. Whatever the call is, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly, come, 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 come quickly. Whatever it is that God told you while in the midst of this message and he told you to come, sometimes you're waiting for me to do the three thing, just come. Whatever God told you to do and he's asked you to come, come quickly, come quickly, 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 quickly. quickly.